This is our Sunlight Travel Trailer. It's a 19 foot, uh, 19 RK model. My wife and I camp with it pretty regularly, but for very short, normally just an overnight trip. And what we wanted to be able to do on those trips is to have a microwave where we could warm up a slice of pizza or a hot dog, maybe warm up a pastry. So just little uh, usage, maybe 15 to 30 seconds at a time for small things. And we didn't want to take a generator along with us just for that. that the trailer is wired so that the microwave circuit only works when you're on shore power. So I'll show you what we've done. We have a microwave. The trailer comes with a stove, but there's no oven. And so they give you a cabinet here where you can have a microwave and they give you a dedicated microwave circuit you can plug into. So it goes in, but like I say, we norm normally don't have shore power where we go. So we wanted to run off our battery. I'll show you what our battery looks like. The battery is very weak and it's pretty easy to upgrade, but this is the battery that came with the trailer. You can see it's only 64 amp hours. But since we wanna use the microwave so little, we thought we would do the calculation and see if we could run it for that little bit of time with an inverter. And when you do the calculation, it turns out this has about 400 watt hours of energy if you assume that it only goes down to about 50%. And the microwave draws 1100 watts, close to 1200 when you count the inefficiencies for the inverter. So it means you can run the, run the microwave for about 20 minutes and it would completely drain the battery. Well, drain it down to 50%, which is pretty low. But since we're only gonna use it for such short bursts, we figured that each minute that we run the microwave is about 5% of the battery. And so since we're only gonna use it for 30 seconds here or 30 seconds there, then we figured this is gonna be, we're gonna try it and see if we can use this battery with an inverter and run our microwave. I got an inverter, I plugged it in, I ran the test. This battery runs the microwave. This is the test. Notice the voltage is 12.5. Now watch, the microwave was just turned on and you notice the voltage dropped to about 10.5. And it's trying to make 120 volts output. It's around 110. The way I did this test is I just hooked the inverter up to the battery and then plugged the trailer, the shore power plug into the inverter and I let it run and then uh, ran the microwave for 30 seconds. So watch, it should be coming to the end. See it go, microwave just went off, voltage came back. So we know it's possible, we'll just have to see as we're camping if it's gonna draw down too much of the battery and leave us without battery for the other things, a water pump and furnace and stuff like that. If it is too weak, it's an easy upgrade to maybe a 100 amp hour lithium battery. So that's our backup position. But we're gonna see if for just little simple overnighters, we can use the battery to run the microwave for short bursts. This is the inverter that I'm gonna install in my trailer. It comes, as you can see, it comes with the cables to hook it to the battery. This is the remote on off switch manual. And then these are the nuts that hold the cables onto the inverter. There are two more things that you need besides the inverter. You need an automatic power switch like this one. And you need an extra breaker in your breaker panel. I put this extra one in here that I can use so I can turn off the power to the converter. For those of you that aren't familiar, the inverter turns 12 volts into 120 volts. A converter turns 120 volts into 12 volts. So when the converter's going, it actually powers your 12 volts and it charges the battery, which you don't need if you're running off the battery. 
This is the inverter installed just on the other side of the wall from the battery. You can see I installed it this way so that I can see the readout panels and I can see any trouble codes that it puts out. I also have easy access to plug and unplug the Romex from there. And so it's installed on the wall inside the storage compartment underneath the bed in the trailer. This is how the battery connection looks. I turned the battery around so that the terminals are a little closer because those cables are so short. But the cables basically come down and then go right up under the trailer. I'll get a view from underneath so you can see it. And you can also see how I ran the wires under the trailer. So that goes straight to the battery. And then the other two are the connections that the trailer already had. One is the main 12 volt connection. The other one is the solar controller connection. This is where the 12 volt cables for the inverter penetrate the bottom of the trailer. And they go up into that storage compartment. If you look underneath here, this is where the wires come down from the battery for the junction box. And this is where the 12 volt wires feed. This is my Romex coming down. It goes over that junction box. And then you can see it goes along there through the holes in the frame all the way over to where it comes up to that distribution panel uh, behind that that I showed you. And the remote switch does the same thing. It follows along and it comes up near there as well where it plugs into that switch. So this is how they're run underneath of the trailer. This is the power distribution panel with the front off. And the way that this was wired, this is the converter here, and you can see the wire coming from it. It was together with this wire on a single breaker. What I've done is I removed this wire from that breaker, and then you can see I got a new breaker the way these do is, see that little hook right here? It hooks in there, and then you can see that spike that's in there pushes into this. And so to put in a new breaker, you just hook it in there and push it in like that. Now I'm going to connect this wire to this one. That way the converter will have its own breaker. When I run the inverter, I can flip this breaker off. If this is normally on, I, what I can do is just come here and turn this one off. That way the converter won't be trying to draw power to run back to the battery and wasting energy when I run my inverter. When you have to make more room for an extra breaker in your panel, you have to remove these. What you can do is you just grab them, squeeze on it, and they just snap right off. And that's how there's room for the extra breaker. I have the automatic switch wired up. So you can see this wire down here, this Romex coming up. This is the 110 volt that's coming from the inverter. It comes into the switch here. This switch is normally closed, so without anything, it, it just stays closed here, comes across these contacts, and it goes into this line. That's a 30 amp service line that comes out here and it goes into the back of the panel. So this is the one that powers this distribution panel here. When I plug into shore power, this is the line, this is the flexible line that uh, you plug into shore power. When I plug into that, it you can see it comes in here and it comes on these two sides right here. And what that does is it energizes not only this section, but you can see a wire comes off there to this little circuit board. There's a little timer in there and it runs this electromagnet that's back here. So when I plug in shore power, it switches this switch and it pulls it down and it sends the power from, from the shore power line sends the power through here out to the distribution panel. So when I'm plugged into shore power, it's gonna energize that switch and it's gonna uh, disconnect the inverter and send it directly to the panel. When I unplug it, 
it de-energizes that, it comes back up here, and it hooks back up to the inverter one. So when I run my inverter, I simply turn on, I'm going to have to turn on the inverter, so I'm going to mount a switch about right here. Uh, I turn on my inverter, I come over here, and I can flip off the circuit that I added for the converter, and I'll just be running off the battery with 110 volts. Then, if I want to switch to shore power, I can just plug it in. It'll switch that, and then I can turn the converter back on, and I'll be charging the battery, and it'll be providing 12 volts off of shore power. And that's how all that's going to work. So next, I just have to put the cover on, mount it against that back wall, and it should be ready to go. I've got the remote control switch installed right next to the power distribution panel. That way when I turn it on I can also use the breaker to turn off the converter. And you can see that it's just wired in the back. It goes down through the floorboard and out to the, the inverter. So this is what that whole setup looks like. It has the automatic switching device here distribution panel wired up and the remote control switch all in this region which will just be right on the front part of under the couch. This is what the installation looks like on the inside. You can see that remote control switch is near the distribution box and just under the sofa cushions. The installation is complete. You can see I've got the inverter turned on here. I've got the converter turned off there you can see that the microwave is on it's receiving power so i'm going to try and run it and see what happens that's about 10 seconds it's about 15 seconds so it's working it works fine and that's running off the inverter. I'm going to check to see what the battery says. It was near 100. If I cycle through here, that's the solar's putting out 12.7. The battery's at 12.8 volts. That's zero amps going to here, zero draw. It says the battery's at 82. So you can see it attacks the battery pretty hard. And the refrigerator uses quite a bit too. What we found is our refrigerator, this is what the refrigerator looks like. Um, it's, it's an all electric unit and it uses about four amps and the solar puts out about eight amps. So during the day, it's not only running the refrigerator, it's charging the battery. At night, the battery uh, runs the refrigerator and it doesn't run all the time as you know a refrigerator cycles off and on so the duty cycles probably 50% or less so we've never had any problem at all with the battery running out for our overnight campouts we'll have to see with the microwave if this uses enough power that we don't have enough for the refrigerator then we're going to upgrade the battery to 100 amp hour and you can run those almost to zero so it gives us about triple the amount of battery power. And I think that should be more than enough for the little bit that we want to use the microwave.